Iranians clashed, shouting death to the dictator. You have thousands of people rounded up, some because they demonstrate, some because they blog. The U.S. Embassy in Tehran has been invaded and occupied by Iranian students. You had attacks in Beirut, Buenos Aires, Kobar Towers, Nairobi, and Dar es Salaam. Iran has not been very subtle about confronting us in Iraq. The Iranians are helping train Taliban fighters inside Iran. Iran is the leading the sponsor and supporter of terrorism around the world. When they provide training and equipment to people fighting us, you'd have to say that they are at war with us. Nuclear experts have found unexplained traces of plutonium and highly enriched uranium. Islamic Republic of Iran will not stop its enrichment activities. The Iranian government has failed to live up to its obligations under the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. Once the Iranian missiles are up and running on launching pads in Lebanon, they can reach Western targets. When Mahmoud Ahmadinejad talks about a world without America not only being desirable but achievable, he could mean probably one thing. People discount it because it's so hideous. Democracy inside Iran is a question now of international security. و کسانی که با ملت ما میخوان حرف بزنند باید بدانند که با کدوم ملت دارن حرف میزنند اگر هم الان ندانند به زودی مجددن زمانی که سرشون به سنگ خواهد خورد From Tehran to the United Nations in New York President Ahmadinejad expresses his distaste for America and the international community Media outlets line up for interviews with a defiant Iranian president, as daily news reports focus on Iran's nuclear program. American and Western leaders have often labeled the Iranian regime a sponsor of terror and a violator of human rights. Yet, for more than 30 years, America has misread the guiding principles of the Islamic Republic. What happens when a regime that openly desires the destruction of nations obtains nuclear weapons? The world may suffer unthinkable consequences. Iran's nuclear program is not an isolated problem. It is the final component of an extreme doctrine that has held Iran's citizens and the international community hostage for more than 30 years. The threat America and the world face from Iran today can be traced back to 1978. At the time, Iran was ruled by the Shah, Mohammad Reza Pahlavi, a longtime ally of the United States. Iran is an island of stability in one of the more troubled areas of the world. The Shah was rapidly modernizing Iran introducing secularism and capitalism to a traditional Muslim society. There always is uh, this tug of war uh, in the Middle East between authenticity and uh, what you might call cultural collaboration with the West. Within Iran, the Shah was viewed as an uncompromising dictator. Growing distaste quickly turned into public outrage. Rightists and leftists from all across Iranian society, including Marxists, communists and religious elements, 
formed a popular revolution to overthrow the Shah, and one man emerged as the leader of the movement. Ayatollah Ruhollah Khomeini, living in exile in the suburbs of Paris, had been one of the main opponents of the Shah since the 1960s and offered promises of political freedom. Khomeini was able to ride this, this wave of you know, an enormous dissatisfaction, frustration and expectation. They had no idea who he was, but when they began to see that he had power, they naturally began to gravitate towards him. After months of violent street protests, the U.S. withdrew its support of the Shah. Now we know the United States has passed the word to the Shah of Iran. It's time for him to leave his country. The fact that Jimmy Carter did not support the Shah in the time of his difficulties actually signaled to the Iranian people that the Shah's rule was over. In February 1979, the Shah left Iran, never to return. Two weeks later, Khomeini triumphantly arrived in Tehran as a hero. For Khomeini, the Shah was gone, but the Western influence he promoted was still present across Iranian society. America would soon become Khomeini's next adversary. In their perception, the leading power of the world of the unbelievers is the United States. And the United States is therefore inevitably the main enemy. America is the great Satan because, from their point of view, it is the enemy of God. We are Satan whispering into the ears of the Muslims, trying to tempt them away from Islam. For years, during our school in Iran, our teachers and the government, they told us the Americans are devils, they will kill us. Every morning, they forced us to just chant death to America. <laughs> It didn't take long for the regime to discover a model for fighting against American interests. The U.S. Embassy in Tehran has been invaded and occupied by Iranian students. The Americans inside have been taken prisoner. Just nine months after Khomeini's return, several hundred students stormed the U.S. Embassy in Tehran, taking 63 Americans hostage. The first major American mistake was in the handling of the hostage crisis. At that time, the response was, to put it mildly, feeble. Everything that Carter did showed to the Iranian mind's weakness. They said, oh boy, America's weak. Let's push on. I don't know how much longer we can sit here and uh, see them kept captive while the uh, situation around them uh, does uh, deteriorate. Ma az dekhalat nizami nemi tarsim. On chizi ki ma ra mi tarsanat va bastagi farhangis. The crisis stretched on for 444 days, emboldening Khomeini and further strengthening his popular support. The hostages were not released until January 20th, 1981. I, Ronald Reagan, do solemnly swear. Khomeini understood that Ronald Reagan would be a different kind of a president than Jimmy Carter had been. There probably was a measure of wariness about his approach to Iran and an understanding that he would not put up with the assault on American sovereignty that Jimmy Carter had put up with. Some 30 minutes ago, the planes bearing our prisoners left Iranian airspace and are now free. At the time of the revolution, most Iranians and Westerners alike didn't fully understand Khomeini's guiding principles and the vision he had in store for Iran and the world. Khomeini was seeking what he called an Islamic revolution. 
to establish the, the, the rule of Iran and the world as a whole. His goal was to uh, eradicate the old regime and to replace it with a pure Islamic regime. Iranians, by a reported 60 to 1 margin, have approved a referendum creating an Islamic state and giving Ayatollah Khomeini undisputed powers as theocratic leader for life. Most of the states in the Muslim world, those that have written constitutions, say something about Islam being the religion of the state or the Sharia being a part of a system of law. In Iran, it goes much beyond that. <laughs> The constitution Khomeini canonized guides Iran's leaders to this day. نهضت برای اسلام نمیتوند محصور باشد در یک کشور و نمیتوند محصور باشد در حتی کشورهای اسلامی اسلام برای شما خوب است برای دنیاتون خوب است اگر آخرت هم قبول ندارید برای دنیاتون خوب است It has nothing to do with nationalism, with the people of Iran, with the Iran as a country, with none of those things. It's the ideology of Islamism, period. For over 30 years, the regime has used international terror in its struggle to spread Khomeini's revolution. When you look at Iranian government terrorism, what you understand is that from the very beginning of this regime, in January of 1979, they considered terrorism as a tool of policy. We know that Iran is the leading sponsor and supporter of terrorism around the world. The Iranian regime has an endless number of proxy organizations, beginning with the big ones, such as uh, Hezbollah. Iran set up Hezbollah early on to have a cutout, somebody who could uh, independently carry out terrorist attacks with, quote, no fingerprints back to Tehran. Founded in the early 80s in Lebanon under the guidance of Ayatollah Khomeini, Hezbollah wasted little time before striking American installations. The day after this attack on the embassy here in Beirut, the death toll has continued to climb. It is believed that before the counting is over, more than 60 people will be found to have died at least 16 of them Americans. Hezbollah's next attack would prove even more deadly, attacking multinational peacekeeping forces stationed in Beirut following Lebanon's civil war. At that point, this had been the largest non-nuclear explosion ever recorded. We worked for four days trying to find people who were buried and then we continued to work just to find pieces of bodies, to put them together. Every piece of a body we wanted to bury and not just leave the bodies under the rubble. Their intention in attacking us in Beirut was to drive the United States out of Lebanon and ultimately out of the Middle East. Despite repeated proclamations that terrorists won't affect U.S. foreign policy, Muslim forces in Lebanon achieve their goal when Reagan withdraws all 1,400 Marines to the safety of offshore ships.